Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about another topic that people ask me about frequently and I think I didn't cover it yet in any of my videos. It's about the anti-spark connectors used to power VESCs. This is the old chip walker. I only have this one on desk right now. All the others are in the bolts. So why is the anti-spark connector needed in our bolts? If you make a standard bolt and connect your battery only once and leave it like that, you may also be okay without an anti-spark connector. You're gonna just plug it in once, make a small spark or big, and that's gonna be it for the future of your bolt. This is of course not great, but it can be acceptable. While on my channel we are dealing with travel bolts, and this is why the anti-spark is even more important than on normal bolts. Because we are connecting the battery more often, there is way bigger of a chance to have problems because of this. The spark that's created when you connect the battery is of course not good for your electronics. There are several reasons why. I'm gonna show you one of them because it's a fun one to watch. Let's see what happens with large capacitors and small connectors. These are brand new 4mm bullet connectors. I have about 60 volts on this capacitor already. So this is gonna act as my battery and it's also connected to a power supply. So this is my battery, this is my controller. This is gonna be a simulation of plugging your battery in your VESC controller without an anti-spark connector. Of course, this acts as a little bit of an oversized capacitor in our small VESC controller. What you can see is that the connector is damaged. Not a lot, but it melted away a small piece of it. And if you do this several times, I have to discharge this capacitor now if I wanna repeat the test. So this is gonna create another bank. We can try on the edge because this here the connector is thinner. You can clearly see the damage on the connector. And when you're doing this over and over again, you slowly get a very bad connector with very high resistance and that's of course getting worse and worse each time you do it. Once again just for fun, you can clearly see the damage also on this piece of metal that I used to bridge the capacitors. Okay so now that we know that sparks are bad and the anti-spark is pretty much needed, now we can talk about our options. I'm currently using two different ways of anti-spark solutions. The first one, of course, it's a pre-made thing, is the anti-spark connectors such as the XT90s or a larger version of it, the QS8. This is a very simple solution. As you can see, you have two contacts inside. In between them, right here, there is a small resistor. So when you plug in your battery, the negative pole connects straight and the positive pole connects to the resistor first, slowly charging your capacitor. And then when you plug it in till the end, it bridges to the main power. And the resistor is now in theory not there anymore because there is less resistance to the direct contact. So in theory, all the current should go straight from pin to pin, leaving the resistor there. Sounds like an ideal solution, but in practice, it's not. And that's because the resistor inside is relatively small. It's 5.6 ohm on this one and 5.1 on, on those ones. Because the resistance is small and because these are RC hobby connectors, usually used up to 24 volts, sometimes 30, 40, but rarely 80 and 100. What we use now, with the high voltage we use, there's high power on the resistor for a short time, so they tend to overheat and fail. Well, I have no experience with those one failing because I don't use them in my boards. There are several people who reported them failing and I also recommended them at one point because they are just the simplest way to use. But in practice, they didn't really turn out to be the best solution. The next solution is to use larger ones. It's the same system, just larger pins. So technically it should be better. It should be generating less heat and it should overall perform better. Hopefully also the resistor inside is a little bit larger, but I don't know that. While the resistance of it is again pretty small, 
about 5 ohms. Even though if you read the technical datasheet of these connectors, they are rated up to 600 volts, when you use them at 100 volts, which is the thing now with one wheels, and if you calculate the power going through them, you will soon see the numbers are very high. This is of course for a very very short amount of time, so it doesn't matter that much, but it's still far from an ideal scenario we would want. So as said, hopefully they have a little bit larger resistors, so I do use those ones in my new VX Wheel 4, also because they are the default option with the Tronic Vest controllers right now. I'm actually hoping they will turn out to be good. I'm just saying the resistance of the anti-spark resistor is even lower than in this, meaning it should generate even more heat, but because everything is larger, it might actually turn out to be okay. I don't know, this is something only time will tell. I'm using it successfully for a month and we'll see what happens over time. Putting the anti-spark connectors away, there's another solution which I use in my VX Wheel 3 and that is what I call a manual anti-spark. A manual anti-spark would technically be the same as here, plugging the positive first through the resistor and then plugging it to the main connector, but you have to do it manually. This means you have your negative wire connected first, like this, and you're left with the positive wire with a separate connector, and you double this connector, you wire a smaller one in parallel to it, and you wire a resistor in series of the small connector, and what you do, you connect the positive of the battery with a smaller wire first, this is when the current charges your capacitors, and because you have a resistor you won't have a spark, and only then you plug in the main positive wire. Now we're having both wires connected, everything is going to our VESC, and we still have our resistor connected in parallel to our main wire. And now we have pretty much the same situation as we have here. We have the negative wire going through, we have the positive wire going through, and we have the small loop through a resistor that is here inside the connector, you don't see it, but it's there. This is our resistor loop. And there are now two good things about the manual anti-spark that you can do. First of all, once you have the main wires connected, you can simply unplug the anti-spark, pull it away, and this is how you have absolutely no current going to the resistor, to the controller, once it's in operation. All you have to do is watch out if you use connectors like this to make them isolated and not exposed. You can use other small connectors for this, like the XT30s or anything you want. I just want to let you know how the manual anti-spark I use works, but how you do it and what connectors you use is totally up to you. And now to the main benefit of the manual anti-spark, you can use any resistor you want. This means you can actually choose your resistor to be suitable for the voltage and the current you need. I use 500 ohm resistors instead of 5 ohms in those connectors. This means the current going through the resistor and the power on it is significantly smaller, way less heat is generated, and of course the resistor is way way larger, so it's actually made to withstand way more power than the smaller resistors that they hide in those. Meaning even if you would let your resistor loop in parallel to the main wire being connected at all times when your board is in operation, there will be way way less heat generated here that is generated here just because the resistance of this resistor is way bigger than this one. So you have nothing to worry about, but if there is a chance to disconnect it, why wouldn't you? Just as said, make sure you leave no contacts unisolated or exposed to touch anything. As a conclusion, what's better? This is absolutely way more user friendly, so of course better from this perspective and hopefully the big connectors will turn out good, but from the operational aspect this is of course way better and should create you no problems over time. So it's up to you, either you wanna deal with extra wiring and complicated stuff or use these connectors, I'm just here to tell you the two options you have, there might be other options as well, with some pre-charge boards that would do the pre-charge with the resistor automatically to a relay, and this is not bad at all, it's just even more complicated and I'm not gonna cover it in this short video. So thanks for watching once again, I hope you learned something also today, and see you on the next one!